Thank you. So welcome to this talk called Some Assembly Required. So the wonderful thing about going out and mapping is that you discover a lot of details in the world around you, which you've never seen before. So usually it goes like this. Oh, you found a bus stop you want to put on the map and you think, now I try this one, wait. There you go. Um, and you think, yeah, that's easy. It's a node. You just put an open street map. You say highway bus stop, name Kettlewell. And you think, okay, there was benches. So I put a bench yes in for good measure. And you think you're done. And then you look at the photo and say, there are two benches. This is not exact what I've mapped. So you get rid of the bench equals yes. You put two more nodes in there saying amenity bench. And because Josem asked you for it, you also say, it has a backrest. It has a brown color and it's made out of wood. Now it's much more detailed, very nice, but you already have three nodes. And then shortly before you want to upload, you think, hmm, this thing is called a bus stop. Am I doing this right? Am I really, I'm putting the node where the pole is and not where the bus stops. So we go to Ricky, wait for four or five hours, discussions over 200 messages. And then we learn, oh, I can set another point where the bus stops. And now I have a perfectly mapped bus stop position. So one where the bus stops, one where the people are, where the benches are and everything. And yeah, this is actually something that happens a lot. We talk a lot about we should only put one feature in one OSOM object, but what we're not talking about is that we are getting to a complexity where we have one feature in the real world, some complex real world thing, and we need a lot of OSM objects to actually model this. And you also realize like in our bench example, the bench itself is an object in it. So how do we do this? And then you get the question, okay, how do we actually define what is this real world thing? And it gets even worse if you look in the data user side, because there all the software we have basically works like this. You take one OSM object, you translate it into a point, a line, an area, and then you put it on the map and then you take the next one and so on. So all your beautiful complexity you've mapped is just lost. And personally, I've come into this problem uh, doing geocoding. So for example, if you search for Old Zero, which is an ecological site in the UK, you get three results. The site, a peak and the locality. And actually that's kind of the same thing. So they're all on the map here, all three points. There are different things you want to map, but as a result, you want to maybe get it as one thing. So I've been looking into what are we currently doing to uh, map these complex real world things? Are there some patterns coming from the data user sites? Maybe we can put things back together. And looking at what we are doing, there's basically three basic techniques you can use. You can use tags, geometries, or relations. Let's look at this in detail, starting with the tags. First thing you can do with the tag is what I call object merging. So you say, I have my complex thing, I still use only one OSM object, and then all the subparts of your object, you just put them in into attributes, into additional tags. We already had the bus stop example, where you can say bench yes, shelter no, and so on. And if you think nobody's using this anymore, that's not the case. So 40% of the uh, bus stops say if there's a shelter or not. Another very frequent example are ATMs. You basically only say, does this branch uh, of the bank have an ATM or not? And if you go away from nodes, uh, lanes is another example where we do this. So we started with this one simple line um, of the street and then said, oh, we want to know how many lanes there are. And yeah, this is what you got. You start with the lane tag and then you start with attributes for the lanes. Pros and cons. Well, the pro is very clear. It's really easy to map. It's easy to use because you still have only one OSM object. So fits well with our uh, tool chains. You get into trouble when you want to add uh, additional attributes. We see this with the lanes, so then you get all these bars and semicolons and you have to get it right and do the counting correctly. Um, so this is a problem. Um, the other problem you come in here is that you get a different tagging for the same thing. So we have this amenity bench thing and suddenly we say we have also bench equals yes on the highway uh, bus stop and as that a user I now have to know, okay, there's two different things I have to look at if I want to find all the benches in the OSM. And maybe they're even mapped double, who knows? And the other problem is, of course, it lacks spatial information. Again, the lanes are a good example for this. So if you go from three lanes to four lanes, you don't really know which lanes are which uh, in your uh, two lines you try to uh, put together. 
So that's the first thing for tax. The second thing you can do is you can approach it exactly from the other side. You say, I'm not mapping my complex real world thing, but I map all the subparts. So the satellite dish, the uh, plates, whatever you find. And then add an extra tag, which says it belongs to this big uh, complex thing. The most common thing where we use this is streets. So we cut streets for all kinds of reasons. Max, uh, setting max speed, access, uh, putting roots on it. We are really cutting them in small parts and then say, oh, there is a name tag. And because of the name tag and it's the same, you know, it's still the same street. Um, another example, if you stay with the bus stops, uh, normally you don't have only one bus stop, but if you have multiple ones. And there we also tend to say, okay, just put bus, stop bus stops in there and have the same name. This can easily get out of hand. Uh, for the streets, the example is we are not only cutting uh, streets for max speed or something like this, but also we map extra lanes. Then you get to this complicated thing, and if you want to dare make a single street out of it with a center line, as far as I know from the data using side, it's an unsolved problem. Um, similar problem, again, with the highway bus stop we had, if we move the bench out, then the question can becomes, when is this bench still part of the highway a bus stop? Um, does it have to be on the same side of the road? What does it even mean, same side of the road? So in this part, if you use tags to put some things together, there's always a geometrical um, or spatial component in there. So you're not just saying all main streets in the world are the same objects. You say all main streets which are connected with each other. Or in the case of the bus stop, for example, you say, okay, if it's in a certain area, then it probably belongs to my uh, huge bus stop thing. So again, pros and cons, it's still easy to map. We, do, we use tags a lot because they're just easy to handle. The problem here becomes that you have a lot of value duplication. So, and then of course the typos creep in, how do you exactly write McDonald's and so on. Um, but the bigger problem here is that we're not explicit about this. We're not saying this tag we use to put a couple of OSM objects together. And from the data user side, then you start uh, really doing some fuzzy matching, seeing that it works. We had the um, bus stop example here. So most of the bus stops had the same name, except some of them. They had the platform name also in the name tag. So because we're not explicit about it, it's really hard to use from the uh, user side. So this is what you can do with tags and a little bit of geometry. As I said, is, uh, using tags to group, you really need the geometry. Um, there are better ways to use the ge geometry to um, have relations. So one of them is the point on line. So our data model is really nice. You can really say this node belongs to a way because the ID of this node is on the way. And this is also something we use to have more complex objects most prominently for buildings, for entrances. So if the entrance is on the building outline, it belongs to the building. And then it also might inherit some attributes. For example, the house number, number 21 here, goes onto the building and you immediately see the problem because there are two house numbers, so what do you do? Um, another part where we use this a lot uh, is barriers. And this is actually well supported by routers. So the barrier, implicitly tells you there is an access problem, so you might not be able to go there by foot, by a car, by whatever. And you have to actually put this information on the road for the router to say, okay, the street behind this is off limits. And finally, uh, the most obvious example is intersections. So this really is something everyone here in the room probably knows. If two roads intersect, then you can go from one to the other. If not, then there's probably a bridge in the way. Um, this is really a well-defined relationship. The main problem with this is there's only some specific use cases where this works. Um, and again, we don't have gen generic uh, support and tools for this, but routers and others uh, already uh, can do this. The other thing we do with geometry is uh, what I like to call area fencing, which means you just put a closed way around your complex object and then say everything that's inside belongs to this object. Most commonly used in 3D mapping. So we have these wonderful things where we can build entire churches in 3D by just having the building outline as the area, which says everything inside 
basically describes uh, what the building looks like. Another thing where we use this uh, implicitly, more or less, is in uh, complex areas like shopping malls, airports, schools. We say, okay, there's a playground on the school uh, which only belongs there and things like this. And I also found an example where people have tried to do this with intersections, because intersections can also become very, very complex if there are many lanes and uh, ways to go from one to another road. Um, basically painting an area around this and saying, okay, all the streets inside are part of this intersection. Um, this is still a very nice thing to build a complex object because it's very clearly defined, both for the mapper and for the user. Um, we still don't have, also don't have support for this in general, so this is uh, also something we would need. Um, the more difficult part is here, you've seen on the intersection uh, example, this is an artificial object. So there is not really something which goes around the intersections except in some special cases. And does the sidewalks the, belong to the intersection or not? Uh, this is something we'd have to define. And again, it's uh, restricted to some special use cases, so you need a fairly complex object. Uh, if you have a university, for example, which has campuses all over the uh, city, it already gets complicated. So these are the geometry uh, techniques I found, and then there's the relation. In theory, the relation is pretty much made for what I'm trying to explain here, and that is uh, have multiple OSM objects and put them in one thing. So this is very precise. You really can say these objects are part of my complex real world thing. You can add as many attributes as you want. You only have to uh, state them once. And you can also reuse objects in a different function or role. So you say, normally you say a street, uh, we classify this by car. We say highway primary, it's basically a classification for cars. And then you put routes on top of it uh, for bicycles. We say, okay, I have a different classification there for bicycles. And they are fairly easy to create, but we have realized using them is just a pain. For mappers, you never know which objects are a part of the relation. Uh, you break them accidentally when you edit an object and things like this, uh, which makes it really uh, difficult. And from the data using side, the problem is it's not like you have the relation and you have this one thing which you can just handle the same for all relation. It's really depending on what kind of relation you have, you have to do a completely different thing. And you see this if you look at the examples. So what we have is a multi-polygon. That's a complex or some object, basically. And we handle this well. Every tool can support this, that's fine. You just say, okay, there's multiple areas and I put them together. Um, routes is the other thing which is really well supported. Um, as I said, cycling, hiking routes. Um, so we have a very good idea also what the different roles are. If you have a route which splits up and so on, um, that's working well. But if you get in the third uh, most used uh, relation, which is type site, um, at least for the object combination, it already gets complicated. Because um, you see the description on the wiki says, group of objects with a common identity with discontinuous ge geometry. And this is really, really fuzzy. So if I'm a data user, I have no idea what to expect. There might be some points in this relation. There might be an area, there might be mixed areas, lines, whatever. And it's really unclear what I can do as a data user with this, except maybe putting a point on the map approximately where it is. Uh, there are other types of relations uh, which we use a lot, but they are not really in this building a complex object, but they're more linking two different objects in their function. And that's uh, the restriction, the turn restriction, where you say, okay, I can go from one street to another. And also the associated street relations where you say this house number um, is actually a number for this street. So we leave this out a little bit. So this is basically the basic techniques I found, which are in use, which uh, we're really um, kind of using every day, not really talking about it, but already have. So what are the conclusions for mapping here? The good news is I think if we want to look more into complex objects, we don't need a new data model. So 
our data model is fine. Uh, we can just use it. What we need is conventions. Um, we need to say, okay, this is now a complex object. These two, these two objects belong together and so on. And we can't do the thing we tried with relation with saying, okay, we have this one convention and it works for all. So all the techniques I, I showed you here, they are valid and they're useful for their use case. And I think we should really use what, we, uh, what is best for the use case. What we should be doing more is be uh, explicit about this complexity. So one thing I would suggest is that we give names to these techniques of uh, grouping objects together and really then put them in the wiki. Um, what also might help is, at the moment, the wiki is quite centric on tags. So you can look up the um, highway bus stop tag, the access no tag. Um, but coming from the real world thing and saying, okay, if you want to map this, this is all the objects you need for this. Um, we do this in some cases, but doing this more might help in this case. And I already mentioned, uh, especially with the tags, being explicit about, okay, this might be a tag which is used for grouping so that the mapper knows I have to use the same value. If I don't use the same value, then things will break. Uh, this might be useful. And an important part here is then never to forget the simple case. So I was talking about this mapping in very much detail, but as with the highway bus stop, usually you start with a one thing object and this can be useful. For mappers, it's useful because if you have a wide map, you want to start first with a simple object and then later maybe add some detail. Uh, for a data user, it's useful because there's different use cases. Sometimes you just want to have a point on the map for whatever you do, and you don't want to assemble uh, 10 objects and then find out where they go. Um, or you have the use case where you really want to know in detail, okay, this... Uh, this 3D model of a building or something. So we always should be thinking about the two cases. We have the simple case and we have going slowly to the more complex one. And what I would suggest is, yeah, as I said, new concepts. We already have uh, nodes based relations and we have the abstract concept of the area where we say, okay, either a closed way or some multipolygon. And two suggestions here, what we could do. One is to find something like container objects, so which basically is an area where you say, okay, when you find these kind of objects in this kind of area, then they belong together. So um, a school area, if there's a building in, that's obviously a school, the playground, sorry, belongs to the school, uh, things like this. And the other suggestion I would make here is doing something like anchor objects. So from a data point of use of view, it's easier if you can say, okay, I start with this single ob uh, OSM object, which is a simple one, and then I can go and find all the other that belong to it. So some of the concepts uh, did this well, uh, I showed. So for example, uh, a relation, of course, then you can start with the relation, or if you say, I don't know, if you start with highway bus stop and say, this is my anchor object, and then you say, and the bench, this is a, be a bus stop bench, for example, then you can kind of put them together. Um, what you should do there is resist the temptation to say, oh, if I start with this anchor concept, concept, then I just reference my anchor by ID. That's a bad idea. Because the references themselves can be useful. So if the bench says, I'm a bus stop bench, then maybe somebody doesn't want to go search for the bus stop, but just do the bus stop bench in a different color, just as an example. So what we need as a next step is tool support. So as I said, today uh, our tooling doesn't really support complex objects, expect for a few special cases. We do multi-polygons. There are tools for 3D objects, routing, um, public transport does this, uh, and some hiking maps can also do this. We also have Overpass, which is really good at finding complex objects, uh, but not really good at really putting them then together. So concepts which I think would be a good candidate for writing generic tool supports is this point online thing I mentioned. Um, connected objects, so basically we should do something to put together uh, roads with the same name. It's a little bit more complicated. Then the area containers I mentioned, uh, and also the, sa the same maybe with relations. 
Um, we also should do something on the editing side, but this is something for the next talk. Uh, Martin will show uh, about the future of ID. That's my talk, and I'm looking forward to your uh, questions and suggestions. Okay, so we have a question for Sarah. It says, how can one obtain quality assurance on OSM data because some data seems aggregated? Uh, sorry. The... Um, second word. So, this is a problem uh, because I think what it means is, uh, what the question means is that we are mapping things in many different ways and then trying to put this together. And yeah, I think really getting the tool support for um, finding objects in, that are mapped in different ways would probably help here, I think. Yeah. <coughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much, sir. Um, oh, tell me. It's basically a repeat of the previous question, but is it really wrong to map both Bench as a separate object and bench equally yes to, uh, to mark that bus stop has a bench somewhere that may or may not be mapped separately. Yeah, this is exactly the problem you have with this going from the single object mapping to the uh, separate one. And this is, uh, I think, what we can do is add to the bench. I am, I, uh, I'm also an attribute at the uh, bus stop. Um, I think if you don't do this, it would be wrong because it's impossible for the data user to know if it's the same bench or not. So going back to that bus stop, I think another complexity is also culturally and geographically when bus stops are different, right? So then, then you have another level of complexity. What counts, like thinking of what we talked about this yesterday, like my city, Lima, or Nairobi, what counts as the bus stop? What counts as the bench? What counts as the location where the bus actually stops? And then the one rule of the anchor is different, right? So how would you, what would you recommend to deal with those culturally, geographically different, different complexities? Yeah, this is, this is really where I think this idea that we have exactly one way to map something doesn't work. And especially with the bus stops, we basically you don't have stops, you have streets where you can get on and off. So you might say, oh, it's already a different concept. So we leave the current bus stop as it is defined now and say, okay, think about how, what is the bus stop concept in Lima and find a different way to tag it. It's probably a better way to go about it here. And then, yeah, as I say, I have the wiki page which says real world object bus stop, and then it lists all the different ways in the different uh, different uh, cultural backgrounds, and then you, you can do this. Yeah. A, round of applause. A round of applause for Sarah. Hi. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'm sorry for taking up too much time here, but I really like the talk, Taylor Resch from ITDP. Um, so I think I'd love to hear how you think this applies to streets more generally, especially when people start tagging sidewalks or bicycle lanes as separate ways from the main street. Um, of the various approaches you described, which one do you think will be most accurate? I'm thinking of a case where, you know, we want to be able to use a routing engine to give someone directions and say, turn right and walk along Main Street. But if the sidewalk is tagged as a separate way, it might be This is what I was hinting up, uh, at, at the beginning a little bit, that you can't really define what a real-world uh, object is here. It depends on your use case. And I don't have a good answer to this. So people said, OK, let's map the uh, road area to find this out. Uh, some said, yeah, let's use tag, use the same name tag or something like this. And none of them has really catched on. Um, so that's why I think we need to have tools 
and then see which one catches on uh, if we have actually some tools to try the different ones. Um, yeah, unsolved problem, really. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry you have to post your questions on Venulus, and I'm sure Sarah will be responding to them. So <laughs> we need to move. Um, yeah, thank you.